all you beautiful magical beings welcome to the power divination for the week of january 6th through the 12th of 2020 i am Ahomna and i am the founder of destiny mapping and the power divination and it is a delight for you to be here if this is your first time tuning in for the power divination you are in for a treat now let us get started. We are going to begin by looking at the side real astrology for this week. All right, so let us get zoomed in here. So on the inner circle, we have today, Monday, January 6th. On the outside, the green planets are where the planets are going to be at on Sunday. Last week, we started talking about a stellium in the sign of Sagittarius. Now, we not only have a stellium, which is four or more planets in the same house or sign, we have a Sagittarius stellium, and we now have an 11th house stellium with six planets in the 11th house of Sagittarius all week. <laughs> <laughs> having this here y'all this is no joke the universe wants us to come together and paint the collective dream to think about humanity as a whole this is the 11th house to come together to no longer put ourselves first we are a collective species and we are only as strong as our weakest link the universe is saying, hey, we are in a new decade right now. It is time for you, humanity, to come together and to start brainstorming about how we can create change, how we can solve the problems that are you know, eminent on this planet right now. Yes, with our minds, brainstorming, right? And this energy I'm saying is because we have this Mars in the ninth house here. Mars loves to be in the ninth house. It is a great place for Mars to be for an expansion of knowledge and learning. And mm, we're really looking at the areas in our life that are influenced by government and religion and how these aspects of the whole are impacting us. Using the mental capacity that Mars in the ninth house brings about, and the moon in the third house brings about, and Venus here in Capricorn, right? There is an expansion, clear thinking. We must put our minds together. North node in Gemini, creativity of the fifth house it's time that we create something new that's going to what support the whole support humanity as a whole it's time that we paint the collective vision no human left behind this time wants us to realize that it doesn't matter how big our dreams are sagittarius when we are willing to work together everything will fall into place, right? So we have this big changes that are wanting to come through in our governance, in our religion, in the systems of control that we have created to keep us in the illusion, mind that word, because we'll be coming back to that word when we get into the human design towards the end of the week. The illusion of safety. Facing the pain Saturn, Pluto, South Node in this stellium here, in the 11th house, in Sagittarius, we must face the pain that living in separation from each other has created. This is essential now. We must look at all the ways that we have falled in, that we fell into the trap of division so that we can rise into a new day where we are truly unified, not just in thought not just in word, in action. With this energy at the start of the year, it is going to be very interesting to see what happens this year collectively. 
Moral of the story though, it is time to paint the collective dream. It is time to think about our brothers and sisters of humanity. It doesn't matter where you live on the planet, what race or gender or ethnicity or culture or religion you affiliate with. We are all one human. We are all a part of the same species and we must come together so that we can imagine and create a new collective dream. Now let us shift, taking this even deeper now, looking at the human design. Y'all, this energy right now, it's gonna be so fascinating to continue to watch these power divinations as we move through the year because it's gonna be a very, very interesting time on this planet. Big changes are upon us and those changes require that we show up right angle cross of penetration monday tuesday wednesday we are in the cross of penetration which means it is time to wake up people we chose this path the path of coming onto a planet during a time of massive awakening we chose to enter into suffering fear doubt separation disconnection from our divinity forgetting who we are we chose it so that we can remember, so that we can wake up, so that we can support the freeing of those who were trapped here in this mutant matrix. The cross of penetration comes at a time when it is time to get to the point. No more dilly-dallying around. It is time for the whole collective to wake up. That stellium in the 11th house of Sagittarius means it is all of us or it is none of us. In order to do this, we must create an action plan. The cross of penetration creates a structure, a plan to get people to the point we are making now. And that point is that we have been lied to. We have been forced into separation, forced into slavery, and now it is time for us to unite and rise. We are not victims here. We do not have to stay in the cage. There is no lock on the cage. The cage has always been open. It is time for us to wake up and see the world as it truly is, to see the multiple timelines that are coexisting and decide which timeline we are going to take a stand for, unite for. Is it fear, war, poverty, scarcity, hunger, homelessness, separation? Or is it the timeline of love, peace, unity, abundance, prosperity, all of our needs met together? This is the penetration moment. We are the ones who are penetrating, all of the light workers that have known about these timelines. It's time for us to go out into the collective and start pushing the buttons to wake up the system. Be very wise with your own life in this cross because this cross energizing the collective is so important that you learn to really trust your intuition. Your intuition will be heightened at the beginning of this week. So if you're feeling stuck or trapped and feel like you are shutting down, it simply means that you are out of alignment. Honor yourself and ask yourself, was I following my type and strategy and whatever led me to this feeling now? If you do not know your type and strategy, if you have not tapped into your destiny map, it is time for you to book that in and get clear on how your energy is influencing the whole. Now on Thursday, we're gonna get a quick energy shift. We're going to move into the juxtaposition cross of ambition. Now, this is a fixed path, mean, meaning when we are working with a fixed path or a juxtaposition cross, there is a train and it is on the train tracks and it is heading at full speed. And you either get on that train or you get run over on the tracks because there is no derailing this train. Intuitively, 
this energy is here for a quick moment to help us to realize that we must have both material and spiritual ambition. We must demand that we not only materially evolve, that we spiritually evolve, and we do so as a whole collective. When Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, came and reached enlightenment, Buddhahood, he assisted in millions and millions of other people reaching enlightenment as well. Because this is what we do when we reach certain octaves on the spiritual path, we know that we are one with everything and that everyone is a part of us. And we are only as strong as our weakest link that we must support the whole to rise. Be wise on this day, on Thursday, to not get caught up in being too hard on yourself, in setting expectations that you might not meet. As life is not in your control, you must learn to trust today that you are being guided by an unseen force and that you can trust this force. Be very mindful today on Thursday to not get swept up into opportunities that will not serve you. This cross brings a lot of opportunities, a lot of potential. Not all opportunities are yours to say yes to. Trust your type and strategy always in deciding what you say yes or no to. Not all opportunities that shimmer and sparkle lead to gold. Be very mindful of that. Now, Friday, we are shifting again into a one day, here we are, left angle cross of cycles. It deals with the same genes in the cross. So all incarnation crosses are made from, if we go to the mandala, they're made from the sun and earth, consciously and unconsciously. And as you see, the sun and earth makes a cross in the heavens through the diamond at the center, our G center, the place of our purpose, our soul, our mission. And if we went in from Monday and we looked at this from the mandala, you see this cross is always existing through the mandala here in the zodiac that crosses through the center of the G center. So that's always what we're talking about when we're talking about the incarnation cross, the sun and the earth. So you'll see when we go to Thursday, you have 3242 unconsciously, 5453 consciously on Thursday. This gives us the cross of ambition, the juxtaposition cross of ambition. Now on Friday, we go back into the body graph here. We are still working with 3242, 5436. What changes though are the lines. So the point six as opposed to the point four. Now you'll notice in human design there are lines, the point numbers, one through six. Now we're looking at a two dimensional screen right now. But we are not two dimensional beings, our genes are not two dimensional. So every time you look at the body graph, I want you to imagine a six-pointed three-dimensional star, like the Merkaba star. Imagine every single gene in your body is shaped like this six-pointed star. At the center of that star is the gene, which means that we have six different avenues or pathways or perspectives that we access that gene through. Those six different potentials or perspectives are the lines that you see, the dot numbers. So when we shift into the lines that are on Friday, we shift out of the juxtaposition cross of ambition and into the left angle cross of cycles. Now, this cross also carries ambition because the genes are the same. And it's the ambition that brings an energy to create change. The most important energy that this is bringing us is in the recognition of cycles. 
So everything in life is going through cycles. We see this in history. We see this in our own lives when cycles are repeating themselves. This cross holds the ability to recognize when cycles are complete and when we can step into new cycles. It also helps us to become aware that how we enter into a new cycle, the auspiciousness that this happens at the beginning of a new year, how we enter into this new year is the energy that we will experience throughout the year. So whatever your energy is right now, whatever the language is that you're speaking right now, I have seen and heard a lot of people talking about and using language like intense, overwhelmed. Be so mindful to, to limit and eliminate this type of language from your vocabulary because speaking this language at the beginning of a cycle means that that is the language that's going to carry you through the cycle. I choose language that is in ease and flow and alignment and grace. Where I am not overwhelmed, I am overflowing with opportunities and potential, with healing and growth. I am overflowing with potential to heal and expand and activate my highest potential now. Be very, very, very mindful of your words that you are using at the start of a cycle. This cross can, can bring a feeling of fear, and that is the fear of failure. And this fear of failure keeps our nervous system on high alert and stressed. Are you feeling stressed out? Is your nervous system in balance? Are there fears that are still holding you back from pushing forward towards your goals? Do you wanna push forward and your nervous system holds you back, stops you? There is a big emphasis this year on the need to perfect our nervous system individually and the collective nervous system for the changes that are coming. If you need support with this, this is the work that we do in my Fearlessly Express program. The next session will begin end of summer, and you can get on the wait list for that at rememberwhyyouarehere.com backslash fearlessly express. Right? It's time to heal our nervous system so that we can move through fears with more ease. Now let's look at Monday through Friday consciously. If we go in and we look at Monday through Friday consciously here, we're going to see that we have Monday, let's get back to the body graph, 5453, conscious sun and earth. Tuesday, 5453, Wednesday, 5453, Thursday, 5453, Friday, 54. 53. All week, our conscious energy is moving through these two channels. Now, remember, the conscious sun is our work to do this week. 54 is the navigation for how we transform our life through our interactions with others. 11th house stellium on point. How are we interacting with others? How are we in community? How are we uh, devoting our essence and energy towards the collective dream? Now, within this gene, the shadow is greed. The gift is aspiration. And the city is ascension. Now, Remember always that the shadows are not bad or wrong. They serve us to evolve. Greed allowed us to evolve on the material plane. It allowed us to move to a world where we have the ability to listen to a video from someone who's on a totally different part of the planet right now, streaming. 
on Wi-Fi. It allowed us to develop the tools to make fire, to cook food, to provide, to build a house, to build structures, to build roads, to build you know, resources, and all these things that allowed our species to evolve on the material plane in order to survive. Fear, shadow, energies of all the genes have one thing in common, survival. The shadows insert, ensure we survive. That being said, once we are surviving, when we get locked in phase in the shadows, because fear is being fed to us through every single source on TV and, and, and all over the place, fear is being pushed down our throats. When fear is being fed to us, it keeps us locked in the shadow of these genes. We are surviving as a species. We have all of the technology available to us that is going to clean up the oceans, ensure that everyone has food, clean up the lands, all of the things that we need, we have the technology for. The question is, why is this technology not being allowed to be used? Why is it being kept from the people? This right here, we're going to talk about in a moment when we shift into the energy of Saturday, Sunday. So hold that. Hold that in your awareness. If this technology is available, if all the solutions are in fact here now, have been developed, why are they being kept from us? Why are we not using them? In order to evolve beyond greed, which is the evolution on the material plane. We must shift our aspirations inwards to drive us towards an inner attainment of something more spiritual in nature. It is time, our work is now time for us to go in. We have evolved, we have everything we need, all of the technology is available, and the answers for why it is not being released to the public is because we have not unlocked from within the true essence of who we are to free ourselves from the systems that want to keep this technology away from us because it's easier to control people in fear. The only way to unlock and free yourself from the fear cycle is to go inward and attain something more spiritual in nature. And this is our work for this week. Now, if we look at 53, and you'll see both of these, if we zoom, are down here in the root center. They are pressure centers. They pressure us to move forward. 53 in the conscious earth all week through Friday is our growth potential. It is where we can grow and evolve. And it is also directing us towards challenges that might be hindering our growth and evolution. Challenges that are gonna support us to evolve forward. This gene deals with beginnings and it creates this great pressure to get things started, to develop the structures that can be steadfast and enduring. Now the shadow of the 53rd gene is immaturity. The gift is expansion and the city is super abundance. This gene speaks to the energy at the start. Asking yourself the question, what is the true essence at this beginning? This beginning of this decade, this beginning of this year, this beginning of this project, this beginning of this relationship, this beginning of this business, this beginning of this new home I'm living in, or this new life that I'm creating. Is this beginning started through fear? Was the seed for the business planted in scarcity? Is the roots that are growing in hierarchy and separation? If the answer is yes, these projects will eventually lead to demise. 
immaturity in this essence is when fear is inextricably bound to our intentions. And it is allowing this fear to drive our behaviors and actions. The gift of expansion relies on the universal law of cause and effect to expand in every direction. And for our true expansion to exist, we must move beyond our comfort zone. Our comfort zones are our immature fears that hold us back. It is time for us to push beyond the fears. The fears that we will never be able to change because of this pure, pure patriarchy. The fears that we can never do X, Y, Z because we don't know enough or aren't smart enough or aren't uh, financially abundant enough or healthy enough or all the things that come up for this fear to stop us, to keep us as an immature species. The universe is wanting our species to mature, to expand. And we do that through pushing through our fears. The answer to what timeline are you to choose right now? It's the one with love, with peace, with kindness and compassion and abundance. Now, in order to do that, we must go into Saturday and Sunday and the energy that this is going to bring through the cross of Maya. Saturday, we also shift into projector energy. We can go in and do some inner reflective energy. The rest of the week, we're pretty much working with generator, manifesting generator energy. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday especially is a great day to get work done. That being said, Saturday will be in some projector energy, some reflection, some go inward, some contemplation, some patience. Now the right angle cross of Maya comes to illuminate that it is a time for us to see beyond the illusion. Maya is the illusion. It's time to go into things that are called conspiracy to no longer stay stuck in what you think it is. It has to be because this is what you were told it is and it has to be, it has to be this way because this is what I was told that this is. Everything is not as it appears to be. A tree is not only a tree. Do you see? People are not always who you think they are. The ruling bodies of this world are not always caring. Are you shutting down ideas because you automatically go, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. And I cannot let my guard down because this is conspiracy and this will only blah, 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 blah. I cannot listen to it. You're a conspiracy theorist. Are you getting your news only from a couple places? Are you only listening to certain people? This is the Maya. In order for real change, in order to move forward, we must open up to see many perspectives so that we can get clear on what is really going on here. In order for us to move forward towards a collective vision, we have got to get on board with each other about what has been happening on this planet. We must take some time to start to see the many different perspectives. Yes, there are conspiracies. That does not mean those conspiracies are not truth. Especially when, if you do a little digging, you're gonna see documentation, people acknowledging the truth of these so-called conspiracies. The world is not what it appears to be. And in order for us to change, we must be willing to see reality as it truly is. And that means we're going to be looking at things that are not pleasant to look at. We're going to be recognizing that we have been lied to. We have been sold a story. We have been kept under lock and key. Only there was never a lock. We just 
We just were so brainwashed with fear that we believed there was a lock when there wasn't even a gate. Fear is that powerful when we are not connected to truth. When we are connected to truth, fear cannot stop us. Because truth is love, truth is consciousness, truth is expansion. Truth will always prevail. And right now, the beginning of the year, this energy, this stellium, this collective movement, this truth, this Mars in the ninth house, it is time for truth to be revealed. Stellium and Sagittarius, hey, let's pull back the veil on this illusion and let's really see what's been happening to this species, to this collective, so that we can create systems and structures to change. It is going to be a really incredible decade. A lot is going to be disclosed. When I said, why is all of this technology here and we're not being made available? We're not being informed about it. It's because of the Maya. It's because people wouldn't believe it. It's time for us to pull back, clean off our glasses and start to see humanity as it truly is. Because only when we really see what is happening here, will we be able to change? And that means no longer staying stuck in one perspective. This is the only way this can be. I can only get my news from this source. Limitation is going to only bring limitation for our species. Where are you limiting yourself? Where is your limitation limiting the whole? These are things to contemplate this week. Thank you all for tuning in to this Power Divination. Yes, at times it can be triggering. Yes, at times it can be challenging. Know that it is all for our growth and our expansion and our awareness. If you resonate with this message, please share it. Please get this information out there. Please subscribe to this channel while you're here. Power Divinations come out every Monday. And we're going to be preparing ourselves for an incredible year. Much love to you all. I am Ahamna. I will see you next week for the Power Divination. Bye.